Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made my EF core query four times faster and how you can apply this idea to your applications, whether you're working with EF core or any type of distributed communication, this idea works just the same. So let me introduce you to the application that we're going to use to demonstrate this problem. I have an EF core database context, the application database context, and I'm connecting it to a SQL Server database. To wire all of this together, I'm using Aspire and the app host. Here I'm creating a SQL Server resource, adding a database, and I'm referencing this database from my application. Now, when it comes to what's actually going on inside of our application, I have a single endpoint for fetching the invoices for a specific company, and I purposefully added unoptimized to the route. The arguments are going to be just the company ID, and I'm resolving the invoice service and the application database context from dependency injection. So then what do we have inside of this endpoint? We're fetching the invoices for this company ID from the invoice service, and then for each invoice, we're going to iterate over them in a for each loop. We're creating an invoice DTO, fetching the line items using the database context, adding the line items to the invoice DTO, and finally returning the list of invoice DTO from this endpoint. And what is happening inside of the invoice service? Well, this is just a dummy implementation that is going to return 10 invoices with some random line item IDs. And what this is actually illustrating is a use case where you're fetching some data from an external system or another microservice owned by a different team. And the data that you're getting back doesn't contain all of the information that's required to display on some UI, for example. So you have to augment it with some additional data that you have available in your database. Now, this is a very common use case. And if you can already see why the current implementation is problematic, go ahead and leave that in the comments below this video. Now, what I'm going to do is start the application and execute this, and then I'll show you why this isn't the ideal solution. While this is starting behind the scenes, I also have another endpoint that you can execute if you grab the source code, which you can do from my Patreon. The link to that is going to be in the description of this video as well. And the C data endpoint is just going to populate the database with some line items. So you have what to work with when running the unoptimized version. So let's go into Postman. And I'm first going to execute the C data endpoint. You'll see that this completes. And now let's fetch the invoices for the company with the ID of one, and we're going to call our unoptimized endpoint. I'm going to execute this, and let's execute it a couple of times for a good measure so that we can analyze the response time. And you can see that we are getting the response back in about 23, 24 milliseconds when everything is cached properly within our API. And obviously the response contains the results that we are looking for. Now let's jump into the Aspire dashboard. And here I'm going to go into the traces view where I can see the trace for the API request that I was sending from Postman. And hopefully you can see the problem here. We have 10 spans, one for each invoice that we are returning from the invoice service for this company. Now you can imagine how there might be less or even worse, more invoices, and this will result in more queries. And why this is happening is because we are iterating over the invoices and within the for each loop, we are sending a request to the database. Now the request itself is fairly straightforward. You can see it here. It's a select from the line items table, and we are checking that the line item ID is within the line item IDs that we sent as the query parameter. So very standard stuff here, except the JSON conversion that EF Core is doing. I do admit that this is a bit unusual, but this is up to how EF Core translates this when it converts the query into SQL. Now, what we are concerned with more is how do we solve this aspect where we are sending a bunch of API requests, and this is significantly reducing our response time. You can see that the cost of each of these requests is around 600 microseconds up to one and a half milliseconds, and this is going to be even worse when you're talking with a remote database. In this example here, everything is running on my local machine. So what we have here is a very standard example of an n plus one query problem. We introduce this because we reach out to the database in every iteration of the for each loop, but this doesn't really have to be our application calling the database. It could be our application calling another microservice. And I'm afraid to say that this problem is more common than developers would like to acknowledge. Now, luckily, the fix to this is more or less straightforward. I'm going to show you how by creating another endpoint. We're going to call this the optimized version of fetching the invoices. And let's also update the name of this endpoint. So what I'm going to change here is this problematic part of the code. We are reaching out to the database every time we execute the for each loop. And here's an idea of how we can solve this. Notice how we are using the invoice line item IDs to do a contains call 
and see if the specific line item ID is present in the database and then returning that. Well, we are repeating this for every invoice. Some of them may have the same line item ID if these are not unique across our invoices, but what prevents us from calling this just once before we execute the for each loop and loading all of the required line item IDs into memory. And this is the general idea of how you can solve M plus one problems, any scenario where you run into this. So what I want to do is obtain the list of line item IDs. Here's a completion from Copilot that's using the invoices to do a select many on the line item IDs and then we call distinct and then we call to array. So I'm happy with this. I'm going to accept this completion and I pretty much want to pull out this query here fetching the line items outside of the for each loop. So I'm going to be using the line item IDs variable to do a contains and then we're going to be using these line item IDs inside of our for each loop. Now the key here is allowing us quick access to the line items. So I'm going to also create a dictionary which I can create by saying line item DTOs to dictionary and the key selector can just be the line item ID. And what we're getting back is a dictionary where the key is represented with a long data type. This is what our ID uses and the value is the line item DTO itself. So now now the line items in the invoice DTO can come from the invoice. We access the line items ID and then we can select the individual line item from the dictionary. Now here we have an option of how we want to solve possible null line items. We could omit them, we could throw an exception, we could return a bad request saying that a specific line item doesn't exist. And this is all I'm going to have in the for each loop. We went from one query per loop execution to executing one query in front of the loop and no database queries within the for each loop itself. Now what Visual Studio is screaming at me here is to use the new collection expressions type. I'm not too excited about this, so I'm going to revert to the old version. And now let's test out the optimized endpoint and see if it's faster. So if you recall, the unoptimized version completed on average in 21, 22, 23 milliseconds. If I go ahead and test out the optimized version and we run it for a couple of more requests to have everything cached nicely, you can see that this now completes in seven, eight, maybe nine milliseconds. So it's already more than twice as fast than our original implementation. Let's also take a look at the distributed trace. And if I go into traces and look for the trace hitting my optimized endpoint, you can now see that we have just one database query. And this is significantly more efficient than having one database query per loop execution. Now the query itself is the same select on the line items table with the only difference being that we were smart about the line item IDs that we were sending to the database and we return all of them ahead of time instead of having Having to query for the line item IDs for each of the invoices. And as I said, you can apply this idea to any time you see a similar problem like this. It doesn't have to be your application reaching out to a database, although this is the most common solution. Another very common use case is having an inefficient API that you are reaching out to. This could be a third party API where your room for flexibility is somewhat limited. But if it's a microservice owned by another team and it exposes just an endpoint where you can fetch a single resource, you can ask them to implement an endpoint where you can fetch multiple resources and a single request. This is going to be much faster and more resource efficient than reaching out to this service every time. Now let's also run some benchmarks to be more precise in how much faster our optimized version is. I prepared the benchmark project ahead of time and is going to execute basically the same queries as what I showed you earlier. So we have our optimized and our unoptimized version. I'm calling them the for each query and the batched query. So let's go ahead and run this. The benchmark runner is going to spin up and we're going to observe the results once this completes. And after a few moments, I have my benchmark results and you can see that the for each query on average takes almost 2000 microseconds, whereas the batch version takes around 500 microseconds. So just by being a little smarter in how we write our application code, we managed to produce a solution that is four times faster. And the beauty of this is that once you understand this idea, you can apply it to any situation where you run into a similar problem. Writing better application code is just one part of the story. If you want to see how you can optimize your query speed by tweaking the database with the proper index, then I recommend that you check out this video next. Make sure to smash the like button on your way out. Thanks a lot for watching this video and until next time, stay awesome.